This Russian field watch is a lot of watch for your money. It has an in-house automatic movement, a stainless steel case, and 200 meters of water resistance ratings. But it is by no means a perfect watch. It has quite a few flaws and downfalls. But are those deal breakers? Today we are going to find out if the 24 hours dial Vostok Komandirsky is worth your money or not. Hi guys, welcome back to my affordable watch collection. I hope you are all doing well. If it's the first time you're watching one of my videos, my name is Aviv. And if you are into budget friendly watches, subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss any of my watch reviews or any of my tips for taking care of your watches by yourselves. Today we have the Vostok Komandirsky 650541 on the examination table, an affordable automatic field watch with a 24 hours dial. Vostok Watchmakers Company was established in 1942 in Chistopol in the Soviet Union and started making mechanical watches right after the Second World War has ended, mainly for the military. They started using the Vostok brand name, which means East, in the 1960s and first started making the Komandirsky line of watches in 1965. Today there are two Komandirsky lines, a more basic one consisting of cheaper hand-wound mechanical watches with alloy cases and only 30 meters of water resistance. These watches sell for around 35 US dollars and have many different combinations of case shapes and dial designs. This watch is a part of the higher tier of Komandirskis, which has characteristics with the Amphibia Diver watch line, like the stainless steel cases, automatic movements, and 200 meters of water resistance. The higher tier Komandirskis also have different complications like GMT, small seconds hand, and 24 hours dials, like on this one. These watches sell for somewhere around $75 to $85. I bought this one on eBay for about that price and I will put a link for you in the description of this video. It comes in this quite simple red plastic box. It has the Vostok logo on top and some papers in Russian. Nothing special and nothing too fancy here. Let's take a closer look at the watch. Like I said, this is a 24 hours dial. That means that the hour hand completes a full cycle every 24 hours, rather than 12 hours like on a normal watch. The background is made black, which helps with the legibility and makes reading the time easier. The numeral hour indicators on the even numbers and the lines on the odd hour indicators are printed and have somewhat of a green tint to them which resembles the color of the luminescent paint but they aren't actually loomed. The dots on the even markers are loomed but we will get to the loom in just a little bit. There's also a minute track printed in white around the dial. Beneath the 24 marker there's the Vostok logo and Komandirsky is printed right beneath it. On the 12 o'clock position, where we are used to see the 6 o'clock, there's a date complication window with a white printed frame around it. Above that, 32 Jew printed in Russian and a Russian military rank consisting of a star and two chevrons is printed in red above that. Together with the red seconds hand, it gives a nice splash of color or rather a nice communist splash of color. On the very bottom of the dial, on the two sides of the date window, it says made in Russia, in Russian. We have an arrow style hour hand and a pencil minute hand and they are both nicely polished and have loom on them. 
as well as the little rectangular box on the second hand. The loom on this watch is pretty nice for this price point. It's a bit tricky to tell the time at first. This watch takes some getting used to and it's not always easy to tell the time at a glimpse. For instance, this is not 3 o'clock, it's 6 a.m. This is not 6, it's 12 noon. This is 3 p.m. And this is 9.30 p.m. You see what I mean? The bezel is stainless steel and the bezel insert is aluminum and it has this design printed on it and 20, 30, 40 and 50. It doesn't ratchet and it rotates bi-directionally and there's basically no resistance whatsoever. I mean it, the bezel is going to be in a different position every time you look at your watch. This is somewhat baffling because this makes the bezel practically useless. There are a lot of replacement bezels available for Vostok watches online and that makes them highly moddable. There are many online communities dedicated to owning and modding Vostok watches. The crystal is a domed acrylic crystal and that is an integral part of the ingenious design this watch shares with the Vostok Amphibia which helps with the water resistance and we'll get to that in a moment. The crystal is quite a scratch magnet being acrylic and protruding from the case but that's an easy fix with a bit of poly watch and five minutes of work. In fact I scratched this crystal pretty bad the first day I got it but was able to buff that scratch out pretty easily as you can see on my poly watch video here and in the description. On the 3 o'clock position we have the crown which is a nice and grippy non-signed stainless steel screw down crown. When you screw it out you are met with one of the most distinctive Vostok features, the wobbly crown that gives everyone who's not aware of it a scare. While it looks very flimsy, that is actually a feature that is made to make the crown more resistant to blows. This crown is less likely to bend or break when bumped against something. When you twist the crown up in its first position, it hand winds the movement with a surprisingly smooth and satisfying winding action. When you pull the crown to the second position, you can set the time. This watch unfortunately doesn't have a quick set date capability. So in order to change the date, you will have to go around the dial and pass 24 hours to advance a day each time. Or you can go back and forth between 20 and 24 to advance a day each time. Either way, it's pretty annoying. The case is the 650 case, shared by quite a few Komandirskis and Amphibias. It is solid stainless steel with a rather unique cushion shape, constructed of straight lines. The case is symmetrical, except for the crown, which doesn't have crown guards to protect it. It has a brushed finish throughout the entire case, giving it a very industrial or utilitarian look, and I really like that. The lugs have a slim profile, and they slope down a bit. The corners of the lugs and the underside of them are rather sharp and not very pleasant to the touch. The overall feel I get from the case is that it was made to be durable and functional, rather than to be comfortable to the person who's wearing it. I'm actually fine with this military ruggedness, but I guess that's not for everybody. So that's something to consider when looking to buy the stock. The case back is stainless steel as well. It has the Vostok logo in the center and what I believe is referred to as the radio room design around it. It has a bunch of Russian text that I can't read engraved here. And the only thing I can make out is 200M, referring to this watch as 200 meters of water resistant. 
This caseback is actually not a standard screw down caseback. It uses a unique system that was developed in the USSR and that is being used in Russian watches for decades. The back plate is laid on top of a rubber gasket and this ring screws down on top of it and pushes it against the rubber gasket to prevent any water from coming into the case and compromising the movement. The way the water resistance works in this watch is pretty unique and is borrowed from the amphibia line. The case back and the acrylic crystal compress by the underwater pressure, making the watch seal better, meaning that the deeper it goes, the better the water resistance is. The official number is 200 meters, but tests show that it can go even deeper with no problem. The movement is a robust in-house automatic movement made by Vostok, reference 2416B. It has 32 joules as indicated on the dial. It beats at 19,800 beats per hour. It hand winds but doesn't hack. That means that when you pull the crown to set the time, the seconds hand keeps ticking. The power reserve is stated as at least 31 hours and the stated average accuracy is minus 20 to plus 60 seconds per day which is fairly acceptable. The rotor is signed with the Vostok logo and it charges or winds the watch automatically as it rotates when you move your wrist. Ok, let's talk about the bracelet. After watching quite a few Vostok watch reviews on YouTube, I was expecting the bracelet to be dreadful. But the truth is, in my opinion anyway, that it isn't that bad. It isn't that good either, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly not as bad as some people make it up to be. It is a 3 links style bracelet, where the outer links are brushed and the middle links are polished. There are no end links on the bracelet and it drops down in a way that helps it conform to your wrist better. The links are folded but they do not feel cheap or hollow and I didn't experience any hair pulling while wearing it. The bracelet keeps its width and doesn't taper and the clasp is a simple pressed clasp with the Vostok logo pressed onto it. It isn't the best quality clasp but it does have three holes of micro adjustment. It isn't a bad bracelet, but I don't really like the way it looks, so I personally never wear this watch on the bracelet. Okay, let's check out some measurements for this watch. We start off with the weight. This watch weighs 130 grams. The width of the case is 45.8 millimeters, including the crown and 41.3 mm without it. Lug tip to lug tip is 49 mm. The distance between the lugs is 20 mm. The bracelet does not taper and is 20 mm all around. The thickness of the case is 15 mm, including the domed acrylic crystal. Let's put it on my 7 inch wrist and see how it wears. I think this watch wears pretty nice. I really like the weight it has. It feels really robust and substantial on the wrist and it does wear quite tall as well. The legibility here is great in most lightning conditions and you can easily see the time but like I said that doesn't mean that you can tell the time right away when you look at the watch because this 24 hours dial is pretty confusing and it takes a moment to actually tell what time it is. Like I said I don't really like the way it looks on the bracelet but the black dial and the 20 mm lug opening make the watch wear great on different straps and the touch of red on the second hand and on the dial make this watch pair great with straps that have red accents to them like this elastic army green and red one. And because it is essentially a field watch, 
It looks great on any military style strap. Okay guys, this is it. This is a tough watch to sum up and a difficult review to conclude. This watch has many flaws, many cons suggesting you shouldn't buy it. The bezel is useless, the white date wheel doesn't match the black dial, there's no quick set date and it is quite literally rough around the edges. However, it definitely has its charm, it's a unique rugged and robust field watch that is coming from a brand that has a long history behind it. It sports an in-house workhorse of a movement. It is made to withstand pretty much everything in the battlefield, underwater or in the office. It's a conversation starter and it has a following of thousands of fans and mothers around the world. And when you consider the price, and how much what you are getting for that price, I think we can overlook some of the flaws and that this is a great watch to buy. I would love to know what you guys think about this watch in the comment section below. If you want to own this watch, I will put links for eBay and Amazon in the description of this video. Note that these links are affiliate links. They won't cost you any more money, but there will be a small commission for me that will help keep this channel going. If you like this video, I would love it if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This is the fastest and easiest way you can support this channel. Also follow me on Instagram and get to know me and my collection a little bit better and connect with me on a more personal level. I want to thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time.